A Week in St. Louis, Not Soon Forgotten, by Stuart Nelson and Warner Murray. Ten total photos accompany this section, a recap of the 78th National Convention. Because of the large number of photos, the descriptions will be provided with the corresponding subsections where the photos appear in the hard copy. The text of this section begins as follows. Four years of anticipation, two years of preparation, and a week of activities designed for stellar legs, healthy appetites, a zest for learning the latest in technology, and an interest in helping to guide the future of the Blinded Veterans Association all came to a halt, with the ceremonial lowering of the gavel at the Friday Evening Awards Banquet, this year sponsored by Vonda Pharmaceuticals. Attendees also made their way to the much ballyhooed hospitality suite for a final goodbye to old and new friends. The following provides a snapshot of the activities leading up to that final curtain call. Virtual Town Halls Become Convention Springboard BVA held four virtual sessions dedicated to introducing events and sharing critical information about the impending 78th National Convention to promote the event and encourage participation. The first, held June 6, surpassed expectations for attendance and provided the impetus for several association members to eventually register and travel to St. Louis. The next two sessions, scheduled for June 20th and 27, presented proposed bylaw amendments and an opportunity to discuss them with the organization's national officers. A final session on July 11th again examined the overall content of the convention, but in greater detail than it was on June 6th. Many issues that had been tentative were resolved in time for the July 11th meeting. Critical sponsor support. Offered freely, generously. A photo accompanies this subsection. The full-length image consists of a lady and two gentlemen standing together. They both have faint smiles. The lady is attired in a formal dress while the man in the center is dressed in coat and tie. The man on the right is wearing a dress shirt, but not a coat and tie. All are displaying their convention name badges. The caption reads, Eschenbach Optic of America, Director of Marketing Timothy Gills, Center, recognizes Shantina Gibson and Enrique Sanchez as the company's angel sponsorship recipients for 2023. The convention had many success stories, but none more compelling than those emanating from a record number of sponsored meals and activities. Although three sponsors did not purchase booth space, they were an integral part of the convention and crucially important in their support. Major event sponsors in chronological order were Hotel Orientation Using Navigation Technology, conducted by Way Around, Bow Wow Lounge, sponsored by Waymo and PetSmart of the St. Louis District, BVA Registration, sponsored by Waymo and PetSmart of the St. Louis District, Service Dog Walk, sponsored by Waymo and Human Wear, Rollin' on the Riverboat Cruise, sponsored by Vispero, Exhibitor and BVA Member Breakfast, sponsored by Bosma, Missouri Botanical Garden, sponsored by Oracle Health, Tuesday Lunch, and Learn, sponsored by Way Around, Ambassador Breakfast and Ceremony, sponsored by Orcam, Wednesday Lunch and Learn, sponsored by Oracle Health, Flamingo Bowl Dinner and Bowling Event, sponsored by Foreseeable Future Foundation and Humanware, BVA Member Good Morning Breakfast, sponsored by National Association of Blind Merchants, Father Carol Luncheon, sponsored by Dodd Incorporation, Awards Banquet, sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals, Two angel sponsorships were also awarded by Eschenbach Optic of America to two outstanding BVA members who may have otherwise had difficulty attending the convention. Shantina Gibson, Louisiana Mississippi Regional Group, and Enrique Sanchez, New York Regional Group. Off-site visits offer. Taste of St. Louis. This subsection photo reveals a casually dressed lady and a gentleman seated side by side. Their convention name badges around their necks are clearly visible. Visible in the background is a portion of a glass door leading to a store that sells merchandise that relates to the site. The caption says, BVA member David Kilda awaits off-site St. Louis tour of Anheuser-Busch Brewery with his mother, Anna Kilda. The text begins, Convention attendees experience the flavor of the gateway to the West through a variety of activities outside the Marriott St. Louis Grand. In addition to the Monday activities described by Warner Murray below, Groups of up to a hundred were treated to informative tours of the Missouri Botanical Garden and the renowned St. Louis Anheuser Busch Brewery. The visit to the Botanical Garden was sponsored by Oracle Health. Flamingo Bowl, situated just three blocks from the St. Louis Grand, was the site of a Wednesday evening activity composed of Midwestern barbecue, bowling, and music. 
The lively event was made possible by the foreseeable Future Foundation, Humanware, and a dedicated cadre of volunteers from the Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville, Army ROTC program. Although it was not an official convention activity with arranged transportation, rumors spread that several convention attendees made the mile or so walk to Bush Memorial Stadium to see the St. Louis Cardinals take on the New York Mets. The group returned in time to enjoy at least a few minutes in the hospitality room. Dedicated volunteers provide needed assistance. A group photo of 12 individuals, all dressed casually, and all but one a young adult, accompanies this brief subsection. Very little background is visible, the exception being the video monitors that are either mounted or hanging near the ceiling. The caption states, Marguerite Beeman's cadre of volunteers in St. Louis included members of the Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, SIUE, Army, ROTC, pictured with her above. The cadets patiently assisted veterans and their families with food and drink at the August 16 off-site activity in a packed and noisy flamingo bowl. They also made an extraordinary effort to engage with convention attendees, learning their names and inquiring about their military service. The text is presented as follows. If calculations are correct, BVA honorary member Marguerite, the busy Beeman, has now completed 33 consecutive years of volunteering and locating local volunteers to assist veterans and their families at the conventions. To all who knew her then and those who know her now, she hasn't missed a step. Thank you, Marjorie, for your continuous service to BVA, and, although there is only one Marjorie, thank you for locating volunteers who share, at least in part, your enthusiasm and your energy. Happy barks emanate from Bow Wow Lounge. The corresponding photo shows a faintly smiling gentleman dressed in informal attire and wearing a convention name badge. Next to him is a guide dog in a sitting position on the floor. Behind both is a table filled with bags containing the names of dogs that are part of the convention. The caption reads, Chaplain Kenneth Harvey introduces his guide dog to the convention, Bow Wow Lounge. Pictured in the background are goodie bags to be distributed the following day to every registered dog attendee. The details are as follows. Another first for a national convention was a designated recreation and rest stop for working guide dogs, fittingly named the Bow Wow Lounge. The room converted to a lounge, located near convention registration, the exhibit hall, and one of two dog relief areas, quickly became an attractive and popular stop for the dogs at various times throughout the week. The lounge came equipped with personalized goodie bags for each of the 16 dogs with their names clearly printed, tasty snacks that were used as rewards, toys, and cushions on which to recline. Exhibit Hall Energy A photo depicts a lady and a gentleman, both with convention name badges, standing behind an exhibit hall table that contains an informational poster on each side of the two. Both have faint smiles. The table curtain below says way around, next to a logo that is nearly entirely blocked by an extraneous chair. The caption states, Way Around's Chief Operating Officer Jessica Hip and Manager Shaw, Co-Founder Darwin Belt in Convention Exhibit Hall. The text of the subsection starts, The kind of numbers that have passed through here and the overall atmosphere have been great, said Paul Kaminsky, Chief Executive Officer of the American Braille Flag Project, Inc. We're really impressed and pleased with the exhibit hall this year. Paul and Walter Peters, the project's president, occupied one of the 45 booths that were part of this year's exhibits, kicked off by a Tuesday exhibitor and member breakfast sponsored by Bosma. The breakfast allowed time for a few promotional presentations and fostered interaction between members and exhibitors just minutes before the heavily trafficked exhibit hall opened for the first time. Heartland Hospitality As the host regional group for the convention, the Heartland Regional Group assumed hosting duties for the hospitality suite. As difficult as it would be to match the efforts of the Mid-Atlantic Group in 2022, President Jeannie Murphy and her cast of helpers, including husband Robert, came through in grand style. The suite was well-stocked in a variety of ways, including laughter, camaraderie, and the sharing of information and experiences. If the setup was not already near perfect, how about those hot dogs? Yes, a BVA convention hospitality suite with hot dogs, and with both cheese and chili as well. This move was absolutely an extra mile one and may have been a historic first. Please nominate the Heartland Regional Group for future hospitality service no matter what the convention destination may be. Barb Webb Shares Caregiving Journey 
A close-up photo with very little background reveals two formally dressed ladies standing together. In front of the two is a foam board that was previously set on an easel. The board contains the BVA logo at the top and the following text, a caregiver's heart, overwhelmed and overjoyed. The caption states, Barb Webb, Wright, and Cheyenne White, VA Columbia, Missouri Healthcare System. Describe the irony inherent in feeling simultaneously overwhelmed and overjoyed. The subsection starts. Gateway B, the room designated for Barb Webb's A Caregiver's Heart. Overwhelmed and overjoyed. Filled beyond capacity on Wednesday afternoon. The topic, created by Barb herself as a reflection of her own feelings, experiences, and insights, also resonated with the dozens of caregivers attending the convention with their veteran spouses, children, or in some cases, parents. She was accompanied by Cheyenne White, social worker at the Harry S. Truman VA Medical Center, Columbia, Missouri. Cheyenne addressed the group regarding VA resources for caregivers. Barb was among 30 caregivers nationwide in 2020, just as the COVID-19 pandemic hit, to be selected by the Elizabeth Dole Foundation, caring for military families, as a caregiver fellow. Barb's selection to the prestigious group was based on her extensive experience and insight into successful caregiving and her ability to bring attention to the challenges facing America's hidden heroes, the spouses, family members, and other loved ones who provide $14 billion in voluntary care for service members and veterans every year. My heart truly has become overwhelmed and overjoyed at the same time, she said, and I have that feeling today as I assure you that you are never alone as a caregiver. Barb is the mother of Mark Wilson, also a member of the Heartland Regional Group and a former combat engineer who served two tours of duty as an expert in explosives tasked with locating and disarming improvised explosive devices. Together, Barb and Mark have been regular attendees of BVA national conventions and staunch supporters of the Operation Peer Support Initiative and activities at the regional group level. They have also supported BVA through Mark's masterful woodworking craftsmanship a passion of his both before and after his injuries. Over the years, Mark has professionally produced for BVA many award plaques, signs, and other items. Tech, BRS updates. Highlight, Thursday Forum. The traditional convention forum, a series of presentations leaning more toward the academic and technical sides of topics such as blind rehabilitation, sight restoration, and prosthetic and sensory aids welcomed as speakers BRS National Program Director Nikki Sandlan, the VA Office of Compliance, Risk and Remediation, with representatives of Vispero, Alliant, and Perigian, Dr. Philip Troik, Executive Director and Principal Investigator for the Intracordial Visual Prosthesis Project at the Pritzker Institute of Biomedical Science and Engineering, and a VA prosthetic update from Stephen Roberts of Veterans Integrated Service Network 15, Sergeant at Arms Inspires, Father Carroll gathering. Relating his own journey with sight loss and the subsequent realization that he could still do many of the things he loved, BVA Sergeant-at-Arms Brian O'Connell shared with approximately 200 veterans, their families, and caregivers the personal insights that have helped him return to those activities. The setting was the annual Father Thomas J. Carroll Memorial Luncheon, named for the legendary pioneer in blind rehabilitation and BVA's national chaplain during the organization's first 25 years. Even after his glaucoma diagnosis, Brian related, he continued to do the things he'd always done, including driving. In 2014, however, he experienced a pressure spike in his right eye that caused loss of most of his vision in that eye. Then, the same thing occurred in his left eye a year later, causing legal blindness and forcing him to retire from teaching Air Force Junior ROTC and coaching high school baseball. Locating a community of veterans with similar challenges through BVA, Brian shared the new confidence and hope he quickly regained. He found himself on ski lifts, rediscovered his trumpet-playing days with a local band, and started taking virtual piano lessons. He is now back in the classroom and engaging in many of the recreational, professional, and educational activities he had previously believed would be impossible. Proposed bylaw amendments. Debated and determined. Four bylaw amendments were originally proposed and presented to BVA members, first at the town hall meetings in late June, and again at the convention so that in-person roll call voting could be conducted. 
convention delegates and voting members must approve a bylaw change by a two-thirds vote. The proposed change to Article 6, Section 2, Elections, was to stagger candidate nominations for district director so that Districts 1 and 2 would next hold elections in 2025 and Districts 3 and 4 in 2026. Under the existing Section 2, elections for all four districts would occur the same year. The membership voted to adopt the change in the bylaw. The proposed change to Article 9, Section 3, Convention, was to allow annual membership meetings and to move to biannual conventions. The membership failed to approve the proposed bylaw amendment. The proposed change to Article 10, Dues, was to move from the current $50 life membership, half of the funds going to the life membership fund, and the other half to the general fund, to a free membership model designed to empower the regional groups with increased member participation and apportionment revenue while growing BVA's national membership body. The membership failed to approve the proposed amendment. The proposed change to Article 17 was to delete the article entirely based on a national board of directors vote to sever its relationship and all ties to the BVA auxiliary. Events leading up to the convention and a subsequent meeting held August 14th resulted in the withdrawal of this proposed bylaw change. There was no vote for the change on the convention floor, and Article 17 remains intact and in force, with no other action planned for the foreseeable future. Delegates, voting members, elect new national officers. Culminating the flurry of activity all week in and around the Marriott St. Louis Grand was the closing business meeting election of Paul Mims, Heartland Regional Group, as the new national president. Convention delegates and other attendees also elected Wade Davis, Houston Regional Group, as the National Vice President, and Tracy Farrow, Louisiana-Mississippi Regional Group, as National Secretary. Joe Bogart of the GEM State Regional Group was elected National Treasurer. Awardees recognized. At luncheon, banquet. Three photos accompany this subsection. The first reveals a lady and a gentleman, both formally dressed and standing together. The man, also in a service cap, is both holding and displaying a certificate of some type with a cover that opens and closes. Directly behind them, but at a distance, are several large flags that have been placed in individual stands. Also in the background is another man standing at a podium to their left. The caption says this, Dr. Vaniata V. Harvey, left, accepts BVA's highest membership honor from Paul Mims. Pictured in background, Master of Ceremonies and National Service Director Dwayne Driscoll. The second photo shows a lady at left receiving an award from two gentlemen. The man in the center is formally dressed, including garrison cap, while the other is dressed casually and seen with a white cane. The caption states, Joe McNeil and Tim Hornick present BVA Certificate of Appreciation to Kelly Golden, photo courtesy of Wanda Grover. The third photo is a duplicate of the cover image of Shantina Gibson receiving the gold gavel from Paul Mims. The caption here states, Shantina Gibson receives coveted gold gavel on behalf of Louisiana, Mississippi Regional Group. The narrative begins. Dr. Vaniata V. Harvey, Mid-Atlantic Regional Group, was this year's recipient of the Melvin J. Moss Award for Professional Achievement, BVA's highest honor for a member of the organization. The award, presented at the Friday Night Banquet, recognizes success in a professional setting outside the work of BVA especially as the success relates to overcoming the challenges of blindness. Gary Scholerman, Louisiana-Mississippi Regional Group, received the Irving Diener Award for Outstanding Work and Service to the Regional Group, which has relied on his initiative and drive for many years in the organizing of activities and projects such as the Braille flag donations and dedications, not to mention the perfection with which he performed his secretary responsibilities. Tracy Farrow, Louisiana-Mississippi Regional Group, and the recently elected National Secretary, has logged hundreds of hours as BVA volunteer at the Biloxi VA Medical Center the past year, particularly the BRC within the Medical Center facility. Tracy functions as both a BRC advocate as well as one of the watchdogs guarding them, always assuring that his fellow veterans are well taken care of. A new Circle of Excellence Award was presented to Enrique Sanchez for his example of loyalty to his fellow blinded veterans, especially within the New York Regional Group his effectiveness in working with VA blind rehabilitation personnel, and his perseverance in serving others. The Louisiana-Mississippi Regional Group won this fiscal year's Gold Gavel Award for the largest numerical increase in membership. 
The Silver Gavel Award went to the Alabama Regional Group for the greatest percentage membership increase of any group. At the Friday Father Carroll Luncheon, Joe McNeil presented certificates of appreciation to Shelley Blomstrom, Blind Rehabilitation Specialist, Kansas City VA Medical Center, Don Klaus, Visual Impairment Services Team, VIST, Coordinator, Eastern Kansas Healthcare System, Jennifer Ettinger, VIST Coordinator, Michael J. Crescens, VA Medical Center, Kelly Golden, Blind Rehabilitation Outpatient Specialist, BROS, Albuquerque, New Mexico, VA Medical Center, Samantha Hans, BROS, Kansas City, VA Medical Center, and John Mycutt, VIST Coordinator, Alexandria, Louisiana, VA Medical Center. Impressions and Reflections From Warner Murray Warner's impressions of the National Convention come accompanied by two photos. The first of the two depicts two young men and two young ladies standing together outdoors, side by side. Each is wearing a convention name badge. Behind the group is a grassy area followed by a flowing river followed again in the distant background by two sets of motor vehicle bridges. All of the subjects of the photo are smiling broadly. The man at the far left has his right thumb pointed upward, as does the first young lady moving right. The caption states, Staff from Platinum Sponsor Dot Incorporation offered camaraderie and moral support during a hot and humid Monday service dog walk. Pictured left to right near the renowned St. Louis Arch, Chris Unseok Choi, Mergul Takam, Jessica Lee, and Praise Kim. The second photo is a side view image of three formally dressed ladies in a single file line. White canes are seen with the first two in line, and BVA garrison caps are worn by the first and third ladies in the line. Dark glasses are worn by the second and third. The occasion is a formal one in a large dining room. Tables have been elegantly set up in the immediate background. In the distant background are full-length windows that extend from the floor to the ceiling. The caption reads, Left to right, Dr. Vaniata V. Harvey, Mid-Atlantic Regional Group, Marlene Davis Lilly, Arkansas Regional Group, and Michonne Harrison, Mid-Atlantic Regional Group, display a little swagger prior to Father Carroll luncheon. Photo courtesy of Mikon Harrison. The subsection begins with the following. My time at the BVA 78th National Convention was a wonderful experience. As is often the case when one travels, a few unforeseen challenges came my way. A small contingency of the New York Regional Group consisting of the Treasurer, Secretary, and a Life Member arrived on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. via Southwest Airlines. It was a bright, sunny day in St. Louis. Upon exiting the aircraft, I heard the familiar voice of the welcoming committee led by Marguerite Beeman. It felt wonderful to hear her voice and receive the usual assistance typical of every airport arrival heading to a BVA convention. I had arranged shuttle transportation a few months prior to my arrival. The St. Louis Metrolink known as Call a Ride was our means of transportation during the entire convention. The Metrolink shuttle service was on time and prepared for the arrival of blinded veterans. My reservation was for four to six members to ride with me. We arrived at the Marriott St. Louis Grand, safe and sound, and with great anticipation for the upcoming week. The bellhop took the luggage and escorted us to the hotel lobby check-in counter. The guest room was clean and ready to receive me. It contained all that I had requested, refrigerator, needed air conditioning, and lots of towels. The lighting was sufficient, and there was easy access to the telephone and plenty of closet space with hangers. The bathroom was bright, clean, and had a good assortment of toiletries. Our first challenge began as we dropped our luggage and got ourselves ready to head to the BVA registration area. We took the elevator to the lobby and asked for assistance to the area provided by the hotel. There was no one specific person assigned to provide that assistance. We did eventually receive some directions that were a bit complicated for first-time blinded veterans. We started out on the elevators, up and down, but at first, we didn't know where to get off. Somehow, we reached the appropriate underground walkway, containing some steep inclines and declines. We walked until a stranger told us to go down some escalators to reach the registration area. I knew we had finally arrived and were safe when I heard the familiar voice of our Meredith say, over here, BVA members. The Monday service dog walk on a sunny, hot, humid morning to the renowned Gateway Arch National Park attracted a large crowd. The distance was approximately a mile each way. While many walked with their dogs, there were plenty who walked without a dog. 
Despite the pleasant conversations and stops to rest and take photos, some of us still ran out of energy and needed a ride back. Fortunately, a car or two that had been driven to the convention were dispatched for this very purpose and helped those who needed it. The wind was back in my sails a few hours later for the most enjoyable outing of the convention, the rollin' on the riverboat cruise, which included dinner. The bus ride to the location was very lively with spirited conversations and lots of laughter. The walk to the boat floating dock was a short distance over some small gravel stones. Our arrival was greeted with a warm welcome and several thank you for your service comments. We were seated and served salad right away. A live band entertained the crowd with music and singing while the main course was being served. The drinks, desserts, and flashing of cameras were non-stop. It was the best dinner cruise I have ever attended at any convention. My overall opinion of the convention is overwhelmingly positive. Despite some challenges that affected many of us, our membership overcame them with strong grit and pride. Whenever there is true dedication to BVA, that dedication and will to march forward permeates and spreads throughout the membership. Very grateful I am to have been part of the BVA 78th National Convention. HVAC Chairman Mike Bost extends. Congratulations and welcome. House Committee on Veterans Affairs, HVA. Chairman Mike Bost, RIL 12 officially recognized Paul Mims on his election as Blinded Veterans Association National President in a letter addressed to him dated September 12, 2023. Chairman Boss thanked Paul for his service on active duty and his continued advocacy on behalf of fellow blind and low-vision veterans who have also answered the call to serve. This is no small task, but I know that because of your passion and responsibility, BVA will prosper and strengthen its efforts to expand programs and push forward necessary legislation for our veterans in need, the letter stated, referring to Paul's likely upcoming appearance before a joint session of the House and Senate committees in March 2024 to present BVA's legislative priorities 